I wanted to show a video here. We're going changing out an oil system. This is an oil furnace with a air conditioning coil on the top. And uh, so we're going to go to, we're going to stay with the oil because natural gas is not available. So we're going to go from fuel oil and we're going to stay with fuel oil except we're going to go to heat pump on the top. And uh, so this would be what's called a hybrid system. And uh, the way it's going to work is heat pump is going to be priority, which would be stage one. And then stage two will go to fuel oil. But I do an interlock so that I don't never have hot air from the furnace blowing on the evaporator when the heat pump's trying to run because that would cause a high head pressure condition. And works out really well like that. This is a two pipe system. So it's got a supply and return to the tank. And it's actually good not to have too many valves on there because if you close off a valve, you immediately blow out the pump seals. There's goes over to the tank. Tank on this one is outside. So we're also going to keep we're going to use a mechanical air cleaner rather than electronic. And then we're going to st stick with the humidifier. We have a fan powered humidifier, which is pretty new. So first thing to do is break down this bad boy and load it all up in the van. Little furnace. See the heat exchanger. It has one large fire chamber on the bottom there. You see inside. Notice it's not insulated. So you want to make sure your flame doesn't touch the metal. Because uh, the metal is not going to take direct contact. So the flame needs to fill up the void. And right here is where the air cleaner will be. Just doing a mechanical air cleaner, 20 by 25. This system is 4 ton. Had to upsize to 5 ton on the furnace because they don't make a 4 ton. But you can set your BTUs with your nozzle, the, uh, the gallons per minute or gallons per hour, that sets your BTUs. So these can be set to whatever capacity you want. Now I'll use a cased coil on top and then I'll build a transition right here. Here's the completed installation on the inside. The oil furnace. I went ahead and drew outdoor air, combustion air in. That way I didn't have to open up the space in here for combustion air. So now it's direct vent so it pulls in everything that it needs. Evaporator. There's the humidifier. And I also, I like to put these wet switches as a lockout on the humidifier, but I don't shut down the furnace because I don't want them, I don't want to have a nuisance trip of the furnace shutting down. If there's water dripping, it'll just shut down the humidifier. And then here's the thermostat control. And these are just a fancy multi-stage thermostat and it can read outdoor air temperature. This is a much better method to control the heat pump, the hybrid, rather than using balance point because it's really hard to get the balance point right between the switch over between heat pump and oil or auxiliary heat. But setting it up as a regular electric with a two stage, as uh, soon as it calls for second stage, oil is going to come on. So it'll figure out itself exactly where it needs to run. And also if the heat pump were to not run for some reason, like totally iced up outside or buried in snow, it's going to automatically turn on the oil because it's second stage heating. And then on the thermostat it shows auxiliary heat. And the customers know when they start using a lot of auxiliary heat, their bill's going to go up. 
and I have the link in the description it shows the setup for the hybrid it's very simple put the little peanut relay inside the thermostat I have another video on this if you want to see more details on it where I'm doing propane uh, with heat pump hybrid but doing this probably knock the fuel down to knock it down 75 percent in Maryland here so they're barely going to use any fuel oil at all you know on this and it's going to be heat pump is the priority and um, so there will be substantial energy savings doing that now we're running stage one heat which is heat pump so we got air coming in 71 degrees that's the air entering the evaporator and then 91 degrees leaving so we got a 20 degree rise on heat pump for stage one let's flip it to stage two now and see what it does now immediately the heat pump shut off so we can see the oil burners fired up discharge out of the furnace and into the evaporator is warming up once we hit 105 there's the click so now the thermostat locks out the heat pump along with the relay because it immediately shut off when it went to stage two and the heat pumps gonna stay locked out until our air goes back down to 95 111 entering the evaporator, 111 leaving the evaporator. Now the thermostat is still calling for Y1, it's calling for the compressor to run. But if you run the compressor with 124 degree air, it's not going to like it. So the compressor is locked out. It's locked out on the relay, it's tied to white, and it's going to stay locked out on the thermostat, which is right there. Now, see the smoke? I'm a little bit rich, or I'm burning off the oil. So I'll let this thing keep running, see if the smoke goes away. The smoke's all gone from the chimney and that was just a little bit of oil on the heat exchanger that got burned off. Another thing to check here is your flue gas temperature. So we're running 350 and uh, you don't want to run your flue gas cold or you can start getting condensate and rust related to condensate. 400 to be ideal, 350 is pretty close. I don't want to pinch back the air because that's how I'd raise that temperature. I'd, I would pinch back the air because I'm already set kind of low. As you can see right there. And that's the factory setting on the air mixture. And there's no smoke coming out of the chimney. Now we're back down to stage one heating, but the air to the evaporator is still quite hot. So the furnace has to do a cool down. And once it cools down to 95, it'll let the heat pump turn back on to go back to stage one heat. And that cool down can take however long it takes. It's important on the thermostat set up on your second stage heat just three cycles per hour because uh, it does take a while for these things to cool down. 
once we hit 90, compressor will turn back on. There you go. And now you can hear the fans ramping up. And supply is raising back up. At the same time, the inlet is dropping. 87. So we're back to stage one on the heat. Here's the outside heat pump condenser unit. It's on a slope. So I made a little retaining wall there. So it wires up like you would do a normal heat pump except you're not connecting the white wire because you don't want the defrost cycle to initiate the heat which would then shut off the condenser it wouldn't work very well like that. So it's doing a cold air defrost, which isn't a big deal because defrost is only a few minutes. The customer really won't notice it unless they got a vent blowing right on them. Now on this uh, burner, you can't really see the flame very well because the inspection uh, lens, yeah, well the flame uh, hole doesn't really show you anything. So the only way you can be sure you're not touching the walls on the flame is just look at the chart and it shows you, you go by your model number and uh, how many BTUs you want to do. So I'm going to do 107,000 and then you go by your Beckett number which is your type of pump, Beckett NX and then notice on the nozzle it says a 7 0.75 gallons per hour and then a 60B is the spray pattern so you just uh, just put in the nozzle that it's telling you to and uh, you'll be fine on matching it up I hope you like watching the video thanks for watching